On Saturday, the Clippers allowed the Grizzlies to score 140 points, yeah. losing by 26 in that particular contest. Then yesterday, with Kawhi Leonard out, the Clippers allowed the Knicks to score 132 points, although they did manage to win the game. So, Ramona, are you concerned about the Clippers' defense right now? You know, I was at the Knicks game yesterday, and they put up, you know, almost 50 points in the first quarter, right? And and you kind of looked around going, that is not how you answer after having a bat, like a game that, like they did against the Memphis Grizzlies the day before. And Montrez Harrell, who had called his teammates out, went to work. And Lou Williams, who had always been their guy that goes to work, they, they got them back into the game, and then I think they controlled it from, from there on out. I'm not concerned in the sense that they're still win they're winning most of these games. Mm -hmm. They're not. They don't have Kawhi and Paul George in a game together any with any kind of consistency. They're not building anything. The only thing you get you concerned with is essentially if, if the regular season is de-emphasized for your stars. It is hard to keep the rest of the team feeling like the regular season is important, especially when you're playing against bad teams. So they had that really big win on Christmas against the Lakers. Well, I remember that. Since then. They are 26th in the league in defensive mm. rating. Mm -hmm. um, so what I think we have here is we're going to have a team that because of guys sitting out and because of just general focus issues, I don't think we're going to see their best. This is, you know, their assistant coach, Ty Luke could really give Doc Rivers some, some pointers <laughs> on this because this was the way, I mean, like, Kawhi, we've seen with Kawhi, when it's time to bring it, Kawhi brings yeah. it. Yeah. And he takes collective, or he, makes, he makes selective choices on when he's going to bring it. And I think the Clippers believe that they're the best team in the West and that they can do it whenever they want. And where you often see the lack of focus show up is on defense. I think this team is absolutely going to be there, but their lack of continuity and their lack of ability to bring consistent defensive effort could cost them a seed or two. And back in the day, LeBron would just say, I don't care what seed I'm in, get me in. And maybe that's where Kawhi Leonard is now. Let me ask you guys about the chemistry. Ramona, you brought it up mm -hmm. specifically about Paul George and Kawhi and the limited amount of yeah. games that they've played. Like, how long is too long to wait for some of that stuff. I think this is just how it's going to be. Like, they have to wait and they have to deal with this no matter what. I mean, they, I was in the locker room yesterday afternoon and Patrick Beverly was giving one of his epic, epic monologues. Like, you know, they was answering a quote from somebody else and one of his teammates who said, we, we, it's hard to figure out who we are because we're not all out there together all the time. And he goes, I know exactly who I am every time I wake up in the morning. <laughs> hey, That's true. Paul, do you know who you are when I wake up in the morning? I mean, this team knows what it can be. Yeah. They know when they can flip the switch. I think it's just going to be a question of, are they going to go through these little patches where they have this lack of effort because quite frankly they have de-emphasized the regular season. Brian do you think that there's a timetable where we need to start to see Paul and Kawhi well, together what's, more? What's kind of surprised me is that Doc Rivers has made an, 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 a decision to not even practice them yeah. together. They're not practicing today or tomorrow. So they don't even <laughs> get practice time. Yeah. Right. And so to me that's where I think I'd like if I were you know in a normal NBA environment you'd like to see at least get some mm -hmm reps in practice but even at the start of the season when Paul George was coming back from his injury he didn't play Paul and, and Kawhi together because he didn't want them to be in the different rhythm for the game so Doc has a strategy here yeah I trust him. He's a championship coach, sure. but yeah. this is unusual, to say the least. And, you know, covering both teams here in Los Angeles, the this chemistry between Anthony Davis and LeBron James is off the charts. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're like BFFs at this right. point. And Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are still kind of getting to know each other, a little too nice, a little too no you go, no I go, no you go. They're, they're still in that place, but I don't know how much that's going to matter at the end because they have the deepest team in the West and probably the most talent. By the way, LeBron was named Western Conference Player of the Week, so there you have it. Uh, he's, I'm sure, racked up plenty of those. For his 275th yeah. time or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.